History books are filled with all sorts of information about America's presidents, but your teachers may not have told you some of the strangest facts about them. Here are some surprising quirks you wouldn't expect of American presidents. For years, Ronald Reagan and his wife Nancy were known as devotees of the astrological arts. In 1967, for instance, Reagan was sworn in as governor of California at 12.10 a.m., allegedly because it was an astrologically fortuitous time. After President Reagan was shot on March 30, 1981, though, astrology reportedly turned into an obsession for Nancy, as astrologer Joan Quigley had allegedly warned Nancy that something bad would happen that day. Nancy began to rely more and more heavily on Quigley Nancy admitted in her memoir that the astrologer was consulted to help determine the president's schedule, while Quigley herself claimed that, "...through Nancy, I really had a direct line to the president." I timed all the press conferences. I timed most of the speeches. I timed when he would take Air Force One, when he would take off, and when he would land. Another astrologer, Joyce Jolson, even claimed she helped pick George Bush as Reagan's running mate. And here we thought that was actually voodoo all along. What I'm saying is that this type of what I call a voodoo economic policy, it just isn't going to work. President Dwight Eisenhower liked to relax by playing golf, and in 1954, he had a putting green installed at the White House. It should have been relaxing, except for one persistent issue, squirrels. See, Eisenhower's predecessor, President Harry Truman, liked to feed the squirrels, so they were accustomed to having the run of the place. When they began burying nuts in Eisenhower's new putting green, though, the former World War II general declared war on the squirrels, saying, "...the next time you see one of those squirrels go near my putting green, take a gun and shoot it." His staff decided shooting guns at the White House was a bad idea. Instead, his groundskeepers tried to scare the squirrels off. When that didn't work, they started a trap-and-release program where they let the squirrels out in some park in D.C. It didn't really help, but it did get Eisenhower in trouble with his political rivals, who called Ike nuts for being so hostile to his new fuzzy friends. At least it wasn't gophers, though. That could have gotten real bad. I want you to kill every gopher on the course. Check me if I'm wrong, Sandy, but if I kill all the golfers. They're gonna lock me up and throw away the key. Go first! President Herbert Hoover liked his privacy. In fact, he liked it so much that he arranged it so all the servants working in the White House had to pretend they weren't actually there. Yup, it sounds weird, but it's true. Hoover was so adamant that he didn't want to see or be seen by the mostly African-American workers that the White House staff created a secret code to alert each other when the president or his wife were coming. After ringing a bell, they would then dive behind bushes or hide in closets until the president passed. It became such a tradition that the staff kept on doing it for well over a decade before President Truman finally put a stop to it. When President Warren Harding felt overwhelmed by the pressures of his job, he didn't turn to golf. He turned to gambling. Yup, Harding would call in a bunch of his crooked old pals to play poker while they drank and smoked. Teddy Roosevelt's daughter, Alice, described the atmosphere at these games. The study was filled with cronies, the air heavy with tobacco smoke, trays with bottles containing every imaginable brand of whiskey, cards and poker chips ready at hand. A general atmosphere of waistcoat unbuttoned, feet on the desk, and spittoons alongside. Unfortunately, Harding was pretty bad at poker, and at one point he ended up gambling away the official White House China. Whoops! William Howard Taft has a unique resume in the history of American politics. Not only was he President of the United States, he also later served as the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, making him the only person in American history to fill both positions. Yet nowadays, he's mostly remembered for being America's fattest president, thanks to an apocryphal anecdote about him getting stuck in a bathtub. So did he actually get stuck in a bathtub? Nobody knows for sure, but we do know that he actually had a special oversized bathtub made for himself. In 1909, the engineering review Review, published an article about a 7-foot, 1-inch long bathtub Taft had custom-built and installed on the USS North Carolina for a trip to the Panama Canal. After the trip, the special tub was removed and sent to the White House, where it remained for the rest of his presidency. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite historical figures are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.